Hello everyone, welcome back for more Let's Play Professor Layton and the Unwound Future! Through the door! Let's see... Yep, there's one. There's two... There's three! Okay. What a gloomy place. You think so? I actually like how there are dragons everywhere. And... Oh goody, those two are back. Well, he has his friend to boss us around this time. However... Somewhere in here. There's one, two, three, and those two. So you're the scoundrel who buried, who bullied my poor underling. That's gonna cost you, lad. Look who went crying to his boss. I've never seen such bravery. Quiet, you! What was I supposed to do back there? I was outnumbered. There, there, I understand. You're a small fellow, and you knew you had no chance of stopping us. So you got your big lug of a boss to do the dirty work for you. <laughs> Sling all the insults you like, boy. Believe you me, if the boss allowed violence in the pagoda, I'd have pounded you one already. Since I can't do that, I'll sock it to you with a vicious puzzle. Would you like me to take care of this one, Luke? Don't trouble yourself with this riffraff, Professor. I can handle whatever he's dishing out. Puzzle 92. Cave cover-up. Worth 40 points. A couple of rapscallions have hidden some stolen goods in a cave. To protect their stash, they're planning to seal off the entrance with some wood. To do so, they need to cut the board shown below into two equal pieces. Where should the thieves make their cut? And draw the answer with the stylus. Easy enough, right? We have 1, 2, 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, so they need, each piece needs to be 7 big. And they need to be the exact same size. Well, obviously, we're going to have to cut into this side of the square, because this is a small piece. But let's go the most obvious route. Since they need to be seven pieces each, let's let's go ahead and consider this one full piece right here, since it's going to have to be. And we either need to add that piece or that piece to it. So let's see. Well, let's see what happens if we add that piece. Not exactly equal looking. Well, let's cut that. And let's go there. So we have six here, seven, and seven, and they're the exact same. Allow me to present my solution. Success! Nice cut. You're exactly right. To seal the cave, the thieves slipped one of the pieces upright as shown above. So much for that puzzle. Now what'll you do? Huh, you're lucky the boss doesn't let me rough up people in here. But you can't stay here forever. And when I see you on the outside, you'd best watch your back. Yeah, what he said! They're all bark and no bite. Come on, everyone. We got places to be. So we're done in here. And a whole lot of mirrors. There's one, including a big mirror on the floor. Hmm. There's two. Yeah, let's see. Up here? Yep, there it is. Now, new puzzle. This whole room is covered in mirrors. Strange, isn't it? It's very disorienting. It's hard to know which way we should head. It seems as if we've hit a dead end. How do you think we should proceed, Big Luke? 
Maybe there's a hidden panel on one of these walls that we have to press to open a door in here. Close, but not quite. If my guess is correct, the door out of here is hidden in the dark over there. But we can't just rush headlong into the dark. There's no telling what traps could be set there. Ah, now I see what you're getting at. Are you saying that this room is a puzzle, Professor? That's right, Luke, and I'm about to solve our way out of here. Puzzle 93, The Mirror Maze, worth 50 points. Sixteen circular rooms are arranged in a square below. A beam of light shines in a straight line from each of the four letters A, B, C, and D, and exits through each of the four yellow arrows. Two sided mirrors in each of the f in four of the rooms reflect the beams. Each beam passes through the number of rooms listed below its letter. Identify which four rooms contain mirrors and the direction each mirror faces by tapping the rooms. So let's see. C just goes through four four uh rooms and goes straight out. So it goes through four rooms if we do that. So I don't think we want to put any mirrors here. B goes through four. It can either go here or it can go straight out there, but it's not going to make it through that one. A goes through five. One, two, three, four, five. So the best bet for A is to go through that one. So which means that B would need to go like that. So we have the positions of two mirrors, but we need the position of another one. Another two. D has to go through eight mirrors. And we know and just based on basic deduction, we know it has to leave through here. So let's see, if we've got a mirror that goes that way, and a mirror that goes that way, how can we use these to our benefit? Let's see, we can't bounce you across any here, so we can't have any mirrors in any of the straight lines. So no mirror here, but we could have a mirror here. Reflect it back that way, let it hit that one. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, there we go. And there. I believe that's him. Did I have it that way? Yep, 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 yep. That should do the trick. Just Easy enough. I suspected. Perfecto. Okay then, let's press on. It seems my theory was right on the money. This way, everyone. Shoo. Now we can go that way. Oh, let's see here. One, there's two, and three. Professor, I think this may be the top floor. We must be close now. Indeed, we are close. Yeah, you can already see what type of puzzle we're going to deal with, right? Yeah, you should be. Two and three. The future professor's quarters are most likely on the other side of that door. But how are we supposed to make it over that huge gap? Does anyone else think this floor looks like a giant slide puzzle? An astute observation. It seems the foundation under our feet is yet another puzzle for us to solve. Future Layton sure has a flair for the dramatic. 
That does seem to be the case. Now to get started on this puzzle. Number 94, the Dragon Bridge. Another 60 point slidey puzzle. Whee. The bridge is out. If you don't find a way across this room, you'll be able, unable to continue on. Can you figure out how to put the four pieces of the Dragon Bridge back together? You can't walk through the spiked ball, so you'll need to deal with that, too. So, let's see. Head out of the way. Put that over. Okay, let's see. completely out of the way, if I'm not mistaken. Get that over. Come on. Ah, darn it. I need to move that. Yeah, I think that works just fine, actually. Let's see if I've got this right. Well, that's settled. You did it! The future Layton is just on the other side of the Dragon Bridge. There. It's safe to cross now, everyone. Notice even notice they completely rearranged this room after you solved the puzzle. That is a nice touch. All right, stand back. I'm going to open the door. Be careful. Who knows what the future Professor Layton has planned for us? Um, excuse me. You there? Welcome, Herschel Layton. <sighs> I demand an explanation. Are you really Professor Layton? <laughs> yes, of course. Don't you recognize your old friend? I don't know. Something about you seems... off. Surely you recognize yourself, Herschel? Misfortune, our fortune, is a result of your ambition and genius. Hmm. What is it, Professor? You've put on quite a show, but it's clear to me that you're nothing but a charlatan. Oh, is that so? Professor, what tipped you off? <laughs> Yes, what indeed. I'm all ears. You, sir, are a fraud, and I intend to expose you for the imposter you are. Fascinating. Do continue. Luke, would you be so kind as to solve a quick puzzle for me? Uh, right now, Professor. But aren't we kind of in the middle of something? Puzzle 95, looking up. A pile of blocks has been carefully stacked. The image below is a view from the side. The perspective is also rotated in an unknown direction. 
Gravity is acting on the block so that any block not touching the ground or a block below it will fall. When you're looking at the blocks from the correct angle, which direction A, B, C, or D is actually up? Okay, not really a great explanation, but this one I understand a lot better than that puzzle I did not too long ago. We've got to figure out which one of these could actually be a base for the others. And in that, it means which one, if you sit there and stack, if you sat there and this was the bottom, would all of these blocks actually support each other, or would there be some loose ones that fell down and ruined the image? So if C was the base, this one actually has nothing supporting it on the bottom, so it would fall. So that's not it. If B was the base, this one has no support whatsoever and would fall. If A was the base... This is the hardest one. Could A be the base? A could be the base, I believe. What is B is the base? Hmm, A and D look like they could both be... What am I missing? D? Nope, D could not be the base because D, this piece, would slide. So A has to be the base, which means D is up. This one's as good as solved. Phew, that's a relief. There we go. You got it. D is indeed up. When you look carefully at the stack from each angle, you can see which blocks would be pulled down by gravity. With the exception of D at the top, all the other positions would have falling blocks. Yes, yes, the boy is quite bright. We all know that. But what does that have to do with anything? I'm getting there. But first, a question. I have a pen in my pocket that's either red or blue. Which is it? What a terribly uncharacteristic query for you to make. There's no logic for me to work through. I'm not a mind reader, and I refuse to guess blindly. How can I solve your puzzle without a single hint? So in other words, you have no idea what color the pen in my pocket is? Of course not. That's funny. Oh? Luke, what would happen if you removed the bottom row of blocks from that structure I showed you? The rest of the blocks would fall down, I suppose. That's right. Those blocks in the middle of the structure don't float in midair. Only by resting on the blocks beneath can those puzzles stay elevated. Can those puzzles, can those blocks stay elevated? If you were really me, you would have lived through this very moment before. Therefore, you should know exactly what color the pen in my pocket is. Given your answer, I can only assume your memory of that crucial event has vanished. But remember those blocks. Each sits on top of the next. When you remove one, everything on top of it comes tumbling down. It all makes sense now! So, out with it already. What color is the pen in your pocket? There was never any pen to begin with. I had a feeling you were behind this, Dr. Stun Gun. Or, should I say, Dimitri Allen? An impressive deduction. Does anything ever get past you, Herschel? Hmm. Ba -ba Ah, so let's review some mysteries, shall we? The future Layton turns out to be Dimitri Allen, the world, the famous scientist renowned for his research into time travel technology. Who is Dr. Stungun? Dr. Stungun is really Dimitri Allen, one of the scientists involved in the time machine explosion ten years ago. Now, I'm running late with this video, but, and I think I'm going to have to cut the video here. So, 
When we return, we will finish out this chapter. So until then, take care, folks. See you next time.